One year ago, we started our journey in looking for land. In March 2023, we found 40 acres of unorganized land in Northern Ontario, Canada. And we were so excited to start our off-grid journey and heading on the path of becoming more self-sufficient. We are entering our property now. This is the entrance to our property. but we knew this wasn't going to be easy. July, 2023, we officially signed the papers and moved into our land. Living in 300 square feet, getting to know our land, setting up our solar system, and even setting up laundry. But one of the questions we get asked the most, what about water? Okay, so this is how we are getting water into our trailer. And Chi found out his first week on the land that he could get water from a well about 40 minutes away. But we knew that was not practical in the long run. We needed to drill or dig a well. We have water. <laughs> Got the water from our well because we are going to do a sample and see if our water has any bacteria. So when I asked for my microbiologist to let me know the details of your order once it came out, she came back and she just said, Today is the day we get water. Stick around because today we are sharing our water journey. I know you must be thinking this is where I get my water from. Well, I wish that was the case, but the reality is not as glamorous. Welcome again, friends, to the channel. Water is one of the most important resources that we need to survive. A person can only survive three days without water. Sometimes we take it for granted, especially myself. When we live in the city, we open our water and we have running water, but we barely take time to think where the water is coming from, right? But once we moved to the country, that was the first time that we were on well water. Now, most of you probably are familiar with what a well is, a water well, but let me just give a quick explanation for those who do not know. Uh, basically, a well is a hole in the ground where you get water from. Usually that water comes from rainwater that sits into the ground and the earth kind of filters that water. Uh, there are different types of well. The most common wells are, I believe, are drilled wells in our days. Uh, usually you hire someone with a big machine and they come and drill a hole into the ground. It can go hundreds of feet into the ground. So depending on uh, where the bedrock is, the water level varies. But the most common types of wells before were dug wells. Like when the settlers came, they used to dig a hole and, uh, and put stones around. And then they'll drop their buckets in and uh, grab water. In our days, we don't need to use the buckets anymore. We use water pumps to pump that water up. So when I moved into the country and we had a, a dug well, it wasn't very deep, it was like around 20 feet deep, I believe. And it had some uh, cement rings. They were around uh, three feet, three to four feet wide in diameter. But that was a good introduction for me to learn more about wells. So that eventually, when I started looking into buying a property, sometimes you can find a property that has a well on it, but usually those ones are more expensive because obviously people put money into those wells and the cheaper properties that you find are probably don't have driveways or wells or anything. 
you probably have to clear it. Every case is different, every scenario is different. So in my case, when we bought our property, we knew that we were gonna have to figure out what we were gonna do for water. Because we sold our house and we got our property, we didn't have time to prepare everything before we moved into the property. So we had to come up with a solution so hauling water was our first temporary solution until we could get our well. Okay, so this is how we are getting water into our trailer. And we have three totes. That one I'm gonna clean. Okay. These two I'm gonna fill up. How, how, how much do they, uh, how much do they, um... I think it's a thousand liters. A thousand liters? Each. Which is in gallons, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, and this is how we get water into our trailer. So I'm here hauling water again. At least this time I was able to find a two inch hose that fills one of these up in uh, around eight minutes and a half. But it'd be great once we have water in our property so that we don't have to waste gas and time coming down here. But it's great to have a place that we can get water from. From the time that I started looking into properties, I already started seeing if how much would it cost to get a well so that I could put that into the budget as well. So I found out that it's quite expensive to get a well drilled and also the timelines was like a waiting list of like over a year to get someone to drill a well. So I started looking into can I dig my own well? Is it possible? So I saw a lot of videos on YouTube of people digging and uh, by hand even and being able to dig their own wells. After I bought my property and I spoke to the neighbors around, I started to realize that digging my own well was gonna be harder than I thought, mostly because we are up on the Canadian Shield, so there's a lot of rock. Then I thought maybe I won't be able to dig my own well. So that's when we decided to call someone to get an estimate on how much it would cost to drill a well and to see how long it would take. I called three different companies and only one of them actually got back to me. The gentleman came by, very nice guy. He told me he couldn't really give me a price and most companies cannot. They just go by feet. So the deeper they have to drill, depending on the material they have to drill through, the price changes. There's a website where you can check the wells that have been drilled in your area, at least here in Ontario, and it tells you how deep the neighbors or the people in the area had to, to drill to get water, right? And obviously these professionals check those, those wells in the area before they come. And he told me that he thinks it could be between uh, ten to $20,000 to drill the well. And obviously that doesn't include the pump, the piping and all the other plumbing that is required to get the water from the well your house or wherever you're using the water. I didn't think I had many options. I said, okay, let's do it. And uh, he said he was going to get back to me in a month or so, so that we could start the drilling. But time went by, I think over two months went by and I didn't hear from him. And the idea was still in my head that maybe I should try to, to dig a well. And if it doesn't work out, so be it. But at least I tried. My husband dug a hole here just to see if we had any water and the water level was pretty good so we've been doing some testing around the land. Look how deep it is. It's only so after some prayer and walking around the property I saw some spots that were kind of wet throughout most of the year so I thought well there is water here so I just have to figure out a way to capture that water. That's where our story begins. Today is the day we get water. <laughs> Part of hauling water guys so Desperate times go for desperate measures. This is called a well point. This point is hammered into the ground. Usually people try to get it like 30 feet underground so that water can go in through these holes. And then you attach some pipes on top here until the surface and you attach your pipe and the pump. Some people use a hand pump. I was working on this pump, an old pump that I had that broke. The method I'm going to use to drill this or to hammer this into the ground is going to be with the water jetter. So I'm going to use my pressure washer to soften the ground and open it up before I drive this down so I don't have to use a jackhammer or a post hammer. So I'm going to try to use the water jet nozzle. Top here, and I think it has four or three 
on the sides here so it sprays water back and down at the same time and this other end attaches to your pressure washer make the hole hopefully i'll be able to get around 20 to 30 feet deep but i'm kind of not very hopeful because of this guys over here yeah a lot of rock in the ground so if i hit a rock then i won't be able to go any deeper so we're preparing a path to go to the location where we're gonna attempt to drive the dwell point so i'm gonna cut some some trees here that were already down when we got here so i in order to be able to move it i'm gonna cut it into smaller pieces load it up and move them somewhere else It's a super gloomy day today. I'm gonna go call my husband in for him to eat lunch. Um, it's actually raining right now. Not a lot, but just a little bit. So the generator was on before, but what we do is is that we charge our uh, solar panels, or not our solar panels, panels our batteries with the um, with the generator. So then we are able to have. Uh, power So yeah on gloomy days. We definitely need a generator. Then let's see how the well is looking here <sighs> It's a lot of work putting in a well. Hopefully it works out fingers crossed Peter, guys. Been helping daddy out yeah. <laughs>
can see me falling. I'm really not coordinated. Why would I want to go in the hole? So you can test it out. Test what out? The depth. Oh my. It's good content. If you fall specially, that would be Dang. amazing content. I don't know if I'm coordinated enough for this. Can I see you do it first? No, you're doing good. Just the one leg at a time. Three point contact. It's okay, we'll edit it out. Just <laughs> almost there. Two hours later. It's kind of scary. It's people that do clay in their faces too for beauty. Okay, I see it. What's wrong? Wait, it's deep. Oh, uh, yeah. No, I'm not going in there. I can barely touch it. It's good, right? Yeah, there's a rock there. Yeah, there's a bunch of rocks. I need to pump the water out so I can uh, can't see what's going on there. Yeah, so the plan right now is to pump this water out, throw it over there, mm -hmm. so I can try to, to see if there's something that I can dig deeper or not. Let's see what your shirt says. Papa can't fix it. We're all screwed. Papa can't get water. We're all screwed. I know. So. We're pretty much screwed. We're going to have to pay what? Like, oh, I don't even want to know. So overnight the hole filled up with uh, mud that falls down. So that's why I have to close this hole as soon as possible because just have to keep on digging the same dirt out over and over again. So the sooner I finish this, the better. I may remove this dirt, then I'll show you guys the rock. So I'm gonna try to break it. <laughs> So as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, my plan was to drive the well point down with the help of my pressure washer, but I decided to dig first just to make sure that there weren't too many rocks, but I was afraid there would be too many rocks, and I did hit a bunch of big rocks, which I would probably not be able to drive the well point down any further than that. And once I came to that realization, I started thinking what other options I had for the well. Good morning, guys. So it's another day here. I'm thinking of doing this well in an innovative manner. I'm gonna, I haven't seen anyone do this before, but I'm going to try to do it. I'll show you guys. And I hope it works because I'm pretty invested here. I think I wasted already almost a thousand dollars in material. So. But I'm not going to be using, I am digging a well, it's a dug well, but I'm not going to be using the cement rings, the traditional, what they call well tiles. I only got like 12 to 16 inches of water right now. I'd like to get deeper so I have more of a reserve. And in case the water level drops through the year, because I'm not sure how the level variate. Here it's almost the end of summer, so I'm guessing this is the lowest it's going to be, but I could be wrong. But yeah, so there's some big rocks that my machine, it's a good machine, it has helped a lot, but it's just too small for those big rocks. Well, but it did all right. Like I lifted up some pretty big rocks with the machine already. Like this one here, there's only half of it exposed. On that other side, I got another big one. But this one here is just not budging and it's not letting me go any deeper. So I think with the... With the backhoe, I'm able to dig maybe a foot more, but I just can't go there because I'm hitting the rocks. 
So we might have found gold. Yeah, that's gold. Right here. You should, you should, uh, you should research, babe, how it's supposed to look. That's gold, right? Eh? Right. Well, I was able to dig as much as I could. There's a couple rocks there that I'm not able to move. So I'm just gonna lay the pipe around it. I wanna try to get as low as possible. I'm gonna be using uh, some landscape fabric. So the water can go through, but it won't mix the clay with the gravel. So I'm gonna lay the fabric down now. Our first load of gravel just got here. I'm gonna use some for the well. I just wanna clarify that whenever I mention gravel, what I actually mean is the clear stone, which was the type of stone that I ordered for the well. that the silt and the clay doesn't come through to the water pipe. I laid the gravel there so that the water can come up. And now, I'm gonna, after I level here, I'm gonna put the pipes to collect the water on top of the gravel. As you can see here, I finished laying the, the first layer of clear stone on top of the landscape fabric. I also covered up the sides to prevent more debris from falling into my stone layer and also from the whole thing collapsing. Also I keep the trash pump running so that I'm able to work because it fills up quite fast. Now I'm just cutting the perforated PVC pipe to size to fit within the area I have. These are the fittings that I used to make all the connections. I didn't use any glue on it because I don't really care if it's watertight as it's gonna be submerged in water. So these pipes are just to store water. I made sure to leave the, the holes right on the bottom, right over there, so that the water comes in from the bottom up. The well point is inside this pipe. I put a check valve here so the water only goes one way and the pipe can be primed. And over here, I'm making a mix it all the way up so that I can sanitize it and so I have access to see how deep the water is. Alright, so I covered the pipes with another layer of this landscaping fabric to try to keep all the silt away. Still gonna put gravel all around it and then close it off with the last layer. So. The gravel is all inside a blanket of this material and the pipes are inside the gravel inside a blanket of this material, landscaping material as well. And in here, in my peak pipe, water is already building up. 
as the water level rises. So we'll do level inside here. All right, so now I'm just finished wrapping up uh, the layer of gravel that's around the pipes with the uh, unscaped fabric. And after I'm gonna throw some more gravel and I might add another layer of landscape fabric just to separate the clay from the gravel. And as you can see, this is very clay like. I believe it's gonna help the surface water not to go into where the collection pipe is. So yeah, I'm just gonna throw the last piece over here, wrap this up, throw some more gravel, and then we'll see. So I filled back with gravel. Now put the last layer of uh, landscape fabric, and now I'm gonna just put a layer of plastic and then throw the dirt back on top. We have water! <laughs> Michael, are you happy? Happy dance. <laughs> we have water. So this is the first clearing of the water, it's overflowing, it's the second time we filled it up. This is the second top, we filled once already. Wow, that's really good. Mommy, see how cold it is. 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 How does it clear is it? How clear is it? Pretty clear, look at it. It's washing the rocks. You see those, saw those rocks? Yeah. Thick from time. Wow. A good one. So much water. Wow. Alright, so I hooked up the pump to the well point. And now I got a tilt over here. I'm gonna measure the yield for the first time. I pumped out the water with uh, the trash pump a couple times to try to clear it up a bit. It's been uh, two days. So let's see how much water we can get. Okay, Nicholas, plug it in. Let's hope it works. Is it working? Leave it in there. Might need a couple of pumps. Oh, yeah. here's something. So it didn't work. So we are currently priming it again because it didn't work. So let's see how it goes. I hear the sound of water. Yeah. It might be working, guys. Lift it up slowly, Nicholas. I think it's working. Yep. Oh, wow. Look at that pressure. Put your hand on it, let's see. Oh, well. Good pressure. Still not clear as I'd like it to be, but. Yeah. All right. So that's 100 liters, it's past the 100 liters. Yeah. So almost going so to 300. It's 200 liters right now, no? Yeah. How's the. Is it still filling? Oh, yeah, it's going strong. Still going strong. Oh, I hear something. Is it sucking water now? I mean, sucking air. You see bubbles here? That means it's sucking air. Okay. 
at the mosquitoes, eh? So many. They're upset because their their spa has been shut down. Okay, so we hit almost 300 marks. That's more water than we use in a day, for sure. Oh, yeah. And this fills up. I know. This is way more water than we use in a day. If we do laundry, maybe we use that much. Yeah. That's true. And this will probably fill like three times in a day. Oh, yeah. So, I think easily we can get almost 900 liters yeah. in a day. Like, this is 900. So, yeah. Right now, it's almost at 75 gallons yeah. in one pump. Oh wow, better than I expected. Uh -huh. Imagine we hit here. Let's see how clear the water is. Wow, it's pretty Looks clear. Looks clear from here, but once you put it in a glass, then you yeah. truly see. Oh daddy, can we use the water to play with the hose? We'll have our baby suit and then we'll go play with it. It'd be better to test the water first. Oh yeah. So yeah, we're at 500 liters, 125 gallons. Yeah, it's hard to see in the dark. Next time I should have brought my flashlight. It's starting to slow down and it's sucking a bit of air now, which means we're at the, at the end. Well, we're not too sad about it because we almost hit 150 gallons and this probably fills three times in a day, so we could probably fill one and a half of the stoats a day, which is, well, that will give us for almost oh, yeah. a week of usage stored up. So we're happy with the yield. All right, so I'm disinfecting the system now. Everything's pretty much done. This is my breathing hole that I made. I put a uh, landscaping fabric inside there so the mosquitoes don't get in. And after I cover here the pipe with this, I then glue it so I can remove it easily when I need to. I'm running the water into my system, the pump, the pressure tank, two filters, and back into the hole so it circulates the bleach all over the system. This eventually is gonna be inside covered up and stuff, but just for now, until I get the water tested, make sure everything's fine. I don't wanna run pipes all the way up if we end up not using the water. And once I collect the samples, I'm gonna let it sit a cup a day, then wash it out, the, the bleach, and then I'll take a sample and take it to the lab to get it tested. All right, so it's the next day after I bleached the system. I let it stay until probably like 14 hours. So I dumped the bleach inside, left it inside the pump and the pressure tank and the pipes and the filter. So it's pretty clear just with this one filter. I pumped out once today. So I took out the chlorine and now it's filled up once. There's still a little bit of smell of chlorine or bleach. So hopefully I'll pump it out again tonight to take out most of the bleach out of the system. And then I'll run the test tomorrow morning. Get the samples to get the test done at the labs. And after I make sure that the water is good for consumption, I'm gonna run the pipe all the way up to where we're staying or we might move locations to somewhere more secluded over here. Still deciding. All right, so this is inside our trailer. All the water that comes in goes into this UV whole house water filter. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do another test, I'm running it through this filter now, and hopefully I'll take care of that. When I asked for my microbiologist to let me know the details of your order once it came out, uh, she came back and she just said they are all clear, just not approved yet. She did both 50 and 100 milliliter dilutions and everything came back zeros. 
Perfect. That's good news. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you no, so much. Yeah! Told you, third time's the charm. Yes! <laughs> All right, so uh, our water has zero bacteria. So the way we're filling our water tanks right now, because we don't have any permanent solutions, is we run the, this pipe goes down to the well, and this pump pulls the water up from the well, and it pushes through this pressure tank. And then it goes into our sediment filter, uh, 50 micron. And then it goes into this carbon filter, which is a 5 micron. And then it goes into a 1 micron sediment filter. To make sure I remove as much particles as I can so that the UV light can do its job. And this new UV light is good because it comes with an indicator that tells you that the light is working properly. So when both lights are green, I know that it's working. And then it takes a few minutes to get the lights warmed up. And once that's going, then I can go ahead and open the faucet and the water will be disinfected, zero bacteria. In one day, we can get our week's worth of water. So we have plenty of water and it's filtered. So praise God. Wow. <laughs> Splash pad when you're married to a plumber. All right, so we're doing some chores outside. The kids are enjoying their chores. What are you doing, Lily? Cleaning the car. Cleaning the car. Michael, careful not to wet anyone. We're using the well water. Pretty happy with the results I was able to get water with a very modest budget considering if I had done the traditional board well those cement castings I think each ring is around $300 and they're pretty heavy too so the delivery of those materials would cost just delivery alone would probably be over a thousand dollars plus materials would probably be close to another two thousand dollars that one I budgeted around $5,000 for that project. And also because I would probably need heavier machinery to be able to drop down the, the well tiles into place. With this method, there are its disadvantages. Well tiles help to prevent surface water from getting into the well, which reduces the risk of contaminants in the water. With the method I did, it's more unlikely to get clean drinking water. But that does not mean that you can't get that water treated to a state that is drinkable and potable, which I did do. But yeah, using this PVC pipes method, uh, I haven't seen anyone do this. Maybe there's a reason why and I'll find out in the future, but so far it's been working and I'll keep you guys updated as time goes on. Six months, one year from now, two years from now, we'll see how long it lasts. Uh, but yeah, just uh, in materials, I probably wasted less than a thousand dollars. This was the cheapest way that I could find to do this. I didn't have to use the sand point really because I could have just gotten away with using a foot valve which would have reduced the cost even more. But I had already bought the well point so I just used it to give an extra filtration. I've learned a lot with this experience and I'm probably going to be attempting to do another well in the future as our needs for water increase. So I look forward to seeing the the suggestions and comments so that I can improve as well as I like learning from others. I like watching other people's videos and learning and uh, try to put all those ideas together to figure out what's the best solution for me and my family. Having said that, this video is for entertainment purposes only. Do not try this at home, but in the future, what I would do be safer because this can be dangerous if the, the walls of the well collapse while you're digging, that could kill you. So in the future, I need to be safer. So I could probably brace the walls with uh, some two by fours and plywoods on the side so that it's safer to work in because there were points that I was digging and stuff started falling and I got a little worried. I even told my wife, make sure you come check up on me every uh, so often. Another thing that I learned is that with my setup, it's going to be harder to winterize because my future house is going to be further away from the well location, which makes the jet pump not a very good option, I believe, because to suck the water all the way from the well to the location, it's going to be very hard, even priming that pump. 
that pipe. So I believe that's gonna be a challenge. The other solution is to have the pump near the well, but then in the winter time, I have to worry about that pump not freezing. So that's gonna be a future video. I'm probably gonna dig a hole and create a housing underground for that pump so that it stays, uh, uses the ground temperature in the winter so it doesn't freeze the pipes. That's probably what I'm gonna end up doing. But if I were to do this all again, I probably would have put a submersible pump using a pitless adapter. If I need to replace the pump or anything, I still have access to it. And that way I wouldn't have to worry about the, the pump freezing or anything like that. What I did this year is I removed the pump every time I needed water. I brought the pump to the well, I filled up my container and then I disconnected everything and took out the pump and kept it in a warm place. But yeah, that's uh, not very practical. So I do need to figure out a better way to winterize the system. Now, would I recommend this method to anyone? Well, that depends. If you can afford to drill a well, obviously that's better. You get uh, in some cases unlimited amounts of water and sometimes it's even safe to drink. Uh, you might still need some filters to take out other stuff from that water. But I know that not everyone has $15,000 sitting in the bank that they can just to invest into this, which is a good investment and in the future, I'm might still drill a well but I feel like it's a good solution if you don't have like a river or anything close by that you can haul water from it saved me a lot of time not having to go haul water and uh, at the end of the day I was able to filter it and get it clean enough to consume so to me that worked out for my family at least but every situation is different and before you attempt to do anything make sure you do your research Make sure you test the water if you do get the water in this unconventional method regardless even if you have a, a well a drilled well, you still have to test the water once in a while to make sure that it's free from contaminants. Yeah, there's probably uh, many methods that you can use. If I could get away with the sand point, I probably would have used it. But in my situation, because of the rocks, I wasn't able to use the sand point. So I had to get creative with another way that I could harvest that water. And this is what worked for me. Terry's making it rain.